<laughs> to whom it may concern, we at the North American Space Administration would like to congratulate you on your acceptance into the Level 9C Alpha Training Program. Please consider this invitation as a great honor, as there were dozens of applicants but only one position in this program. To ensure your training be, be as productive and safe as possible, please make sure to follow the rules below without question. You are expected to be off the premises of Level 9C by no later than 2100. At that time, the doors will be locked from the outside and remain unlocked until 0600. You are not permitted to the use of any cologne, deodorant, or perfume, soaps, or detergents while employed on Level 9C. If you encounter any children anywhere in or near the premises, barricade yourself in the nearest room and call it in on the radio. If you're unable to get contact with anyone on the radio, chew the cyanide tablet provided to you on the first day. No weapons of any sorts are allowed on the base. If you find a weapon on the base, call it in at once. You may experience thoughts that are not of your own. This is normal. If the thoughts become hostile in nature, or you begin to experience headaches, report to your commanding officer. It is imperative that you understand there are never more than 9 people on level 9C at any given time. If you notice any more than that number, barricade yourself in the nearest room immediately. It is imperative that you maintain our study is space related only. If anyone begins to question you about the nature of, true nature of your work, do not hesitate to use lethal force if necessary. It is imperative that you remember that you do not have a family. If you begin to suspect that you have any family members, particularly any children, notify your commanding officer at once. <laughs> Again, we would like to congratulate you on, our most re on your most recent promotion, and thank you for your service. I think I let something into my house. My parents called me around 7 o'clock telling me that their flight would be delayed until at least 10 and that they should be home later tonight. I thanked them and told them if I was up I would help them get their things in the car. They told me they wouldn't bother me if I was sleeping. I decided to go to bed soon after the phone call of my parents. It was around 8.30. And it was actually 10 o'clock when things started happening. A loud knock on the front door startled me and woke me up from my peaceful sleep. I then heard my parents calling me, telling me to come and help them with their things. It was strange since they had a key and told me they wouldn't bother me if I was sleeping, but I thought nothing of it. Why didn't I check the time? If I could go back in time and change anything, I would have looked at the damn time. Then I would have known whatever, out, whatever was out there wasn't my parents. Much to my stupidity, I opened the door and what was standing on the other side definitely were not my parents. I don't even know how to describe them. It was two things with long black hair and long fingernails. Something... That was definitely not human. They came to my house, and I couldn't stop them. It's currently 12.24 a.m., and I'm typing this while I'm locked in my bedroom. I can hear them outside, and my parents aren't home. Yet. They should have been here by now. Whatever I let in doesn't have an intention of leaving. I don't know what they want, but please... Let me know what to do. I don't know how much time I have left. The first time hurts the most. Lying in bed, the dark, the cold. I don't know if they're coming for me yet. I hear them breathing, but I convince myself it's the wind. Their harsh breath beating against my floor sounds like the wind tearing at the exterior of my home. It's cruel how similar they sound. They move. I can't see them because of the darkness of the shadows. But I've become aware and par paranoid now. They know that my heart is beating faster. That's exactly what they want. They scurry about, making light scratching noises as they move in. I reach for my lamp to turn it on in panic as the darkness remains. They're coming for me. I try to find the cord to my lamp. It's unplugged. I rummage around my bed for my flashlight. They're laughing at me now. They've gotten louder. They're close. 
closer than I could have ever guessed. I end up kicking something hard in my blanket, and I feel my heart stop. It doesn't budge, and I realize exactly what I found. The flashlight. The joy is short-lived. It's breathing down my neck now. I whip around and turn on the light just to see. A disfigured face, wet and glistening. Its yellow teeth are curled into an evil, wicked smile. I open up my mouth to scream, but it shoves its claws into my chest with such force that I cannot utter a sound. I whimper in pain, but not loud enough for anyone to hear. The creature's prying me open. The first time hurts the most. It whispers quietly as it crawls inside me. The wounds are gone. They heal before my eyes and leave no scars. No one believes my story. I know they're there, though. They're living inside me this very moment. And they're going to keep coming.